It's fair to estimate that the overwhelming majority of the global population has never encountered the term retroactive jealousy. Even those who become familiar with the term are often unclear about exactly what it means or what it's referring to. It's a broad term and it can refer to many different things. Thus, I wanted to put together a video outlining the three main types of retroactive jealousy as I see them. If you're currently struggling with any of the following types of retroactive jealousy, this video will help you determine where you fit on the retroactive jealousy scale and offer a bit of insight into what you can start doing to feel better. You might be experiencing two of these types of retroactive jealousy at the same time. And it's also important for me to be clear that this is not some kind of clinical medical definition. And this is certainly no substitute for a professional diagnosis of any type. I've simply arrived at these categorizations after going through thousands of emails from people detailing their experiences of retroactive jealousy. And as I see it, these experiences fit into three different, though closely related, categories. Let's get started. Type 1. Moderate retroactive jealousy. If they're being honest with you, most people in intimate relationships will tell you that they don't love thinking about their partner's past relationships and or sexual history. Falling in love and committing to someone can feel like a blissful and at other times dark and painful acid trip for the brain. There's no more potent substance on the planet than the hormones our brains release as we fall in love. Thus, for most of us, thinking about the person we love with someone else in the past, present, or future is unpleasant, sometimes very unpleasant. If, like many people around the world, you're dealing with some kind of mild type 1 retroactive jealousy, Hopefully, with some time and perspective, you won't care about your partner's past a whole lot. In the near future, you may even find that you've become more interested than put off by your partner's past, curious to learn about their past relationships in order to learn about their growth and development as a human being. The bottom line is this. It's not a huge deal if you don't love the thought of your partner being intimate with another person, past, present, or future. The majority of the people in relationships on our planet feel similarly about their own partners and work their way through it without too much anguish or effort. However, things get more complicated if the question of your partner's values enters the picture, which brings us to type 2, values-based retroactive jealousy. It's perfectly understandable if you don't love the thought of your partner sleeping with their ex, even if they haven't seen their ex in years. However, you may have concerns about what your partner's past relationships or sexual history says about their values thus raising concerns about their suitability for a long-term relationship with you. Our values represent the way we see the world, what's right and wrong, and how we should go about living our lives. It can be tricky to share an intimate relationship with someone whom we perceive as harboring conflicting values. Now, it's unrealistic to expect someone to share all of our values all of the time, but it's equally unrealistic to expect a person to live up to their values all of the time. Have you ever made a mistake in love or otherwise, which contradicted your own values, your sense of right and wrong? I thought so. Your partner is no different. Still, this is not to dismiss your concerns if you genuinely feel that your partner has consistently demonstrated that they don't share values, moral judgments, etc. that are important to you, either in the past or the present. This can be a good thing to discuss with trusted friends and family members in order to get their perspectives and hopefully help you better understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling and how you can proceed. And if you check in with yourself in a quiet place on a consistent basis, do some hard thinking, and come to the conclusion that your partner's past really is a deal breaker and you cannot accept it or move past it, there's nothing wrong with that. My response is always the same. Okay, of course you have that right, and I think that's fine. I want to tell these people you are free. You can move on and let your partner move on, and find someone else whose values are more closely aligned with your own. Nothing wrong with that. However, and this is where things get more complex, type 3 retroactive jealousy described momentarily can seriously distort our perspective, cloud our vision, and warp our sense of right, wrong, and what's acceptable when it comes to our partner's past. So, even if you think you might be dealing with more straightforward values-based retroactive jealousy, you might actually be dealing with type 3, Retroactive Jealousy OCD. This is the type of retroactive jealousy that much of my work is focused on. This is why I created my blog, book, and online course. This is what I'm most passionate about helping people overcome. 
Retroactive jealousy obsessive compulsive disorder is the most extreme, painful, and challenging form of retroactive jealousy. It's also the least common and least understood. If you are constantly or obsessively making up mental movies in your head featuring your partner and suffering from intrusive mental images of imagined scenes from their past, you're likely suffering from retroactive jealousy OCD. If you feel like you can never turn these mental movies and intrusive thoughts off, you're likely dealing with RJOCD. If you constantly feel the impulse to question your partner about their past, looking for more details about their past, clarity or resolution, you're probably suffering from RJOCD. If you find yourself constantly looking through old photos, creeping their past on Facebook, experiencing mini panic attacks, or finding yourself mired in depressive episodes as a result of thinking about your partner's past, you're almost certainly experiencing retroactive jealousy OCD. Though everyone experiences RJ OCD differently. Some people only have the odd attack of intrusive thoughts and curiosity and are then fine for weeks or months at a time. For others, including me once upon a time, it's a daily struggle. Type 2 and type 3 retroactive jealousy can sometimes go hand in hand. Occasionally, learning about our partner's past relationships or sexual history can cause us to question their values. Then, sooner or later, our brain becomes fixated on this question of values and the details of our partner's past. But our partner's past doesn't even have to be troublesome for OCD to take hold. Many retroactive jealousy OCD sufferers know, deep down, that their partner's past is normal it's not a big deal, whatever, but they still struggle with the constant curiosity, intrusive thoughts, mental movies, and anxiety. For most sufferers, it's crucial to emphasize that often, we can only determine whether or not a retroactive jealousy is based on genuine incompatibility with our partner after we begin putting in the work to tame the noise in our heads and start overcoming our JOCD. Only after we put in some work and the mental movies and intrusive thoughts begin to lessen in frequency can we make the decision as to whether or not our partner's past truly is a deal breaker? And then, hopefully, our decision will be grounded in reality, made in a calm and clear-headed mental space, and it will be the right decision, as opposed to some hasty judgment in the midst of the confusion of retroactive jealousy OCD. So how can you start to overcome retroactive jealousy OCD? Whether or not you choose to affix the OCD suffix to your own experience of retroactive jealousy, I believe all experiences of jealousy, concerning the past, present, whatever, is related to insecurity on some level, and in my work I advocate a holistic approach. Everyone who has benefited from my online course and guidebook has committed to some kind of personal development, attacked their insecurities head-on, and seen lasting positive results. You can also start overcoming retroactive jealousy OCD through watching demonstration videos, personal counseling or psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, meditation, brain rewiring exercises, cognitive behavioral therapy, joining a support group, and many other options. To get started immediately, many people have found my book, Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, and Dr. Jeffrey Schwartz's book, Brain Lock, to be very helpful. Regardless of the severity of the individual's experience, OCD is serious and debilitating and must be approached as the cancer it is. You wouldn't sit back and wait for cancer to simply burn itself out. You have to be proactive about it. You have to try something new. You have to take action. If you're struggling with retroactive jealousy OCD, don't hesitate to try something new, experiment with different options, and seek out the help you need. Myself, and a small army of former RJOCD sufferers can tell you that life gets very, very good once you manage to conquer this beast. I hope this video has helped you determine where you fit on the Retroactive Jealousy scale. Click the link in the description to visit RetroactiveJealousy.com and get more information on how to overcome Retroactive Jealousy and gain clarity and peace of mind.